So that dude went and he taught us another language. Taught us another language. Amazing. Just sort of learn it that quickly. <laughs> so, these people over here spoke nonsense. So I gotta go and get back there. You know, it's not really as much of a walk as it seems like the first time you've got to try and do it. But it is still a bit of an irritation that you can't land the airship closer to some of these places. Especially, it's irritating if you don't really know your way through the game. Like, I don't know my way through this game pretty much at all. And, um... If, you, if you're going exploring, you're like, well, what's in this city? Well, let me go and check it out. Well, I got to land all this far away. Like, well, how do I, well, how far away do I have to land? Well, I got to go search around looking for a place I can land. And I got to run out there. And then I get there. It's like, oh, crap. I, uh, there's nothing for me to do here. So then, like, I go and I disappeared and I get that tablet, that the Rosetta Stone, which is, I figure, will allow me to translate some, uh, some stuff. And then I show up here and it still doesn't work. I had to find some other dude. So I ran out here multiple times. The sky people. Oh, Sid, huh? There's always a Sid. Pretty common in the Final Fantasy games. Like, well, at some point, I figure a lot of these common things, these common elements, would get introduced at some point. Like, they clearly weren't doing everything. They weren't chocobos in the first game and all that kind of shit. It would be, like, multiple decades of traditions of Final Fantasy being accumulated. Chocobos, name Sid, all that kind of stuff. But Sid is a is one of those. There's always a character named Sid. Either a playable character or some side character. Like hell, even um What what did you say? <laughs> what I don't know. <laughs> the airship function. What am I supposed to do here? Are any of these people gonna offer me any useful information? I can't enter any of these buildings. They don't have doors. <laughs> it's me, isn't it? How much harm has befallen me? I mean, there's no shop here for me to upgrade my equipment. Here, Matt, fiend of wind. Fuck. <laughs> A chime. Yeah, the last person, literally the last person that I talked to was the only one that I needed to. Okay. <laughs> There's no shops in here, though. That's... Oh, oh, there is a shop in here. <laughs> Magic. Full life. That is expensive. Fuck. Oh, and I can't... Oh, shit. Which one should I... Ah, oh, God. I having to choose... Full life sounds like a really useful spell. Finally be able to recover all of the magic, all of the health. But holy, like, I feel like I'm going to run into some darkness enemies soon. And dispel, negate magical defenses. One enemy is useful against bosses. I don't know. I don't know. Ugh. Uh, that might have been a mistake. Flare! Oh, you already got this. Huh. 
I'm looking at the mini-map. Is there a weapon shop on the other side? Why the hell does it have to be so far outside of town? Oh, okay, okay, there is no... Hey, what is this? Yeah, alright. <laughs> Mirage Tower. Now, I imagine that is the tower that is in the middle of the desert. So, let's go take a trip off that way. Because I couldn't get into this earlier. Did they... I get what they were trying to do here. Oh, okay, so... They were trying to mimic the kind of Mode 7 graphic style that we saw in... Um... Like the SNES, so like Final Fantasy VI or three in the Western market, where they have the Mode Seven was a graphics um, feature, which allowed a kind of like rotation and angling of large sprites and stuff on the Super Nintendo. It sort of gave a pseudo 3D look, which is what they're trying to mimic here. And the only and they're kind of stuck front facing pseudo sprites in this game in order to give like a 3D environment. Like I can't demonstrate it here. I had it in the airship a second ago. And you know, it, it does kind of give a retro feeling, sort of like what was done with Super Mario Kart, and that kind of thing. It does kind of give a retro feeling, but it's the wrong kind of retro feeling. Because although this game looks more like a Super Nintendo game than a, than a NES game, it was an NES game that they've duplicated here. So it does feel kind of weird. Oh, okay, this is what I've been looking for. I don't know my way around here. So let's... I'm gonna give it... I'm gonna do what I did before. And just sort of explore around a little bit. And then once I got a feeling for the lay of the land, I'm going to retreat back out and use a tent. And recover my character's health. Because these dungeons tend to be fairly long. And there are a lot of battles. I was wondering while I was retreating back from the town of people speaking gibberish what the mechanics are for level ups in this game. Is there some sort of a randomness factor that goes into it? Now, I get a randomness factor in an NES game was a little bit harder to achieve than it is nowadays. In a modern computer system, and like, hell, even like the PS2 had um, dedicated functions and all that kind of stuff to seed random numbers and perform calculations with random numbers. In a way that um, older machines didn't. So if you wanted any kind of randomness or pseudo-randomness in a modern system, all you'd have to do is call a function. And in fact, modern Intel processors have a more true form of random number generation based on things like... Um, the processor being able to sense a kind of healing helm, huh? Being able to sense, like, electrical field differences inside of the... Oh, shit, that didn't... that wasn't... Field differences inside of the processor, like, what it... what it is, um... No, this doesn't help. What does the healing helm do? I don't know, it's the same stat, so maybe it does something and I'll do put this. To so come up with true, or at least more true, and difficult to predict, uh, predict random numbers. But did the old games here have some sort of more um, user code generated random numbers to get some kind of randomness for the level ups? So, you would... 
there are some RPGs, and I saw this somewhat in the NES era and all that kind of stuff, or the, not the NES, the PlayStation 1 era, where your characters would level up, but they don't level up based on a, like, a firm series of level ups. Like, level 1, you have, like, this much strength and this much magic and all that kind of stuff. Level 2, you gain a set amount of points and that kind of thing. And then, like, Breath of Fire series, you have the Master System, which can modify that a little bit, but it's still based on a set series of level-ups. <sighs> I don't know. So, I wonder if... What am I doing? <laughs> so, I wonder if this original version of the game actually had some sort of randomness to its level ups, like your stat increases. And if that is the case, I wonder if this version, which does come across as, I don't know, it seems like it might be fairly true to life. I, I don't have much experience with the original Final Fantasy, but from what I understand, it is at least relatively correct to the original. Like, look at this, like, um, was my thief supposed to gain one strength point at this level, or did the randomness of it potentially increase that only by one, but HP got increased by, by what is that, uh, 27, 28 points. That's quite significant. Oh, there's the tent. Get to use that later on. A lot of stuff here. vampire. Oh, this is the kind of, the exact kind of thing that it seems like that holy spell would be useful for. Let me give it a try. I kind of didn't want to use a lot of magic. Especially with my white mage. This is unnecessary. I just want to see how it works and what it looks like. See, it wasn't that effective. <laughs> oh, he healed. There was somebody up here I think I can talk to. He's probably gonna just gonna fight me. Oh Okay. They think I'm someone else. Is this decoration? Given the design of the tower on the outside, I wonder if all the levels beneath or above are going to get smaller. <sighs> Should I? You think there's something up there that might be useful? Probably not. Oh, this is a new enemy. What am I looking at here? Where tiger? I think maybe I might have over-leveled in this game a bit. Because a lot of the old JRPGs, up until Final Fantasy VI, which was not a difficult game at all, were kind of dependent on you grinding up quite a bit. Chimera! We're kind of dependent on you being willing to spend time just sort of grinding levels. Grinding levels, seeking out the best equipment, all that kind of stuff. Of course, there were mechanics that you could take advantage of, which would make the game easier and all that kind of stuff. And all that kind of stuff really did kind of fade out with uh, Final Fantasy VI, which seems to have been built around the idea of not having a level grind at all. And Final Fantasy VII, of course, is a fairly easy game. It doesn't... Oh, this one's more complicated. Final Fantasy VII is a fairly easy game. You don't have to spend much time level grinding at all, really. Just having a decent understanding of the gameplay mechanics, the battle mechanics, the way stat growth and all that kind of stuff is done, the materia system, makes Final Fantasy VII pretty easy. But... Um, 
the early RPGs, the early Final Fantasies, were somewhat more difficult. And by somewhat, I mean quite a bit more. This, though, I, like I was saying before, I hear that this version of the game is fairly true to the original. But I get the feeling that they did perhaps tune it a little bit to make it less grind-heavy, less difficult. I guess anticipating a kind of different audience, not the original game gamers who were fans of the original, but people that came to it later. For example, I didn't play any Final Fantasy game until Mystic Quest. I think either Mystic Quest or Six. I can't really remember anymore. Probably Mystic Quest, which, by the way, was not a good game. <laughs> Almost turned me off on the whole uh, genre. Oh, that looks damaging. Oh, it was. Oh, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Where's my character? Oh, there he is. Mystic Quest almost turned me off to the entire thing. But, um... That ought to do me. I'm looking for treasure. Ah, there we go. There's a door. But this seems just to be a bit on the easy side. Oh, look at all this treasure. Some of these are going to probably have enemies. Thor's hammer! You're, you use hammers, right? No, you don't? <laughs> Who uses hammers? You use hammers. Oh, look at that. Oh my god, significant increase in attack power and accuracy. Maybe you might actually do a little bit of damage now. <laughs> a lot of money. I mean, I short money, nice. Cottage, that's useful. Unblade! So many weapons I've picked up. I keep pushing the wrong button to open the menu. <sighs> you know what? Uh, I'll do it. Mail. Not for you. Oh, yeah, it is for you. Same stats as what I have. No one else can use it? Okay. Now that white mage is actually doing some acceptable damage now. <laughs> she wasn't really before. Hey, another dude that's not going to say anything important. Now, let me just go through an attack pattern. See, the black mage does 97. And now the white mage does 70. Okay, never mind. That doesn't actually sound particularly good. <laughs> Oh, level up. Hello. Warp cube. Yeah, these are getting smaller. It's also going to make retreating out of this dungeon. Oh my god. <laughs> A lot of uh, enemies. Let me just... Uh, let me just hit them all with some magic. Try to take them all out at once, because I don't want to get bogged down in them launching multiple attacks on me. Yes! <laughs> Two level ups. Not a fantastic level up. Intellect for a uh, warrior? <laughs> no. Decent amount of HP growth. Nine points. BB strength. That's not particularly useful. Hello. You're going to attack me, aren't you? That's a preemptive strike. It's the blue dragon. I can take that. 
I mean, it's got powerful attacks by the preemptive strike, so I knew I was going to win. Flying Fortress. Oh, is that a new level I got to start? Ah, <laughs> oh, shit. It's a new dungeon. I thought I reached the end. Shit. <laughs> it's 20 minutes into this video. I probably should end it. <laughs> All right. Unfortunately, I wanted to end it at the end of the dungeon, but I can't make these videos too long. So uh, that's, that's that.